Now in this part of the question, we've got to find the Cartesian equation and express in the form y equals some function of x for this parametric uh, equation here. And it's also valid for x greater than or equal to minus k but less than or equal to k and we've got to establish what k is. So first of all then, how do we get this equation in the form y equals f of x? How do we find the Cartesian equation? Well, we've got to eliminate the parameter t here. And because this is a trigonometric parametric equation, we need to find some trigonometric identity that relates cosine 2t to sine t. Do you know it? Well, it comes from the identity cos 2a. Remember that cos 2a is identical to cos squared a minus sine squared a. And if we substitute cos squared a as 1 minus sine squared a, remember cos squared a plus sine squared a is 1. If we substitute that as 1 minus sine squared a, then we get 1 minus sine squared a minus another sine squared a. So it's 1 minus 2 sine squared a. That's an alternative version. And that's the one that we're going to use here. OK, we just kind of think about that. OK, so what I'm going to do is we'll take the x. Let's say we have that x equals 2 cos 2t. Two so we now know that this can be written as 2 multiplied by 1 minus 2 sine squared, what used to be a, is now t. So it's sine squared t. OK? Cos 2t is the 1 minus 2 sine squared t. So we can turn to our equation up here, where we see that y equals 6 sine t. And we can see that sine t must be equal to y divided by 6. And we can substitute this in here. We can say that this is 2 then multiplied by 1 minus 2 times y over 6 all squared. So just need to expand this out. Let's just come down here. We've got therefore x equals 2 times the 1, well that's going to be 2. And then this term here is going to be 2y squared over 6 squared, 36. 2y squared over 36. Times it by the 2, and you've got minus 4y squared over 36. You could cancel by 4 here, so you've got 1 there and 9 there. And now you could multiply both sides by 9, and you get, therefore, 9x equals 2 nines are 18 and then minus y squared. So we could make y squared the subject, just add y squared to both sides and subtract 9x from both sides. So you therefore have y squared equals 18 minus 9x. And it's a good idea at this stage, I think, to factorize this. You can see that we could pull out 9 as a common factor. And so you've got 9 multiplied by 2 minus x. So when it comes to finding y, we just square root both sides. And we've got y equals the square root of 9 multiplied by 2 minus x. And because this is a product, we can think of this as the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 2 minus x. So the square root of 9 is 3, and then just leave the remaining part as the root of 2 minus x. And there you have it. Now you may think, well, hold on a minute, when you do a square root, don't you write plus or minus? Why haven't I written plus or minus here? Well, I know that it's going to be a positive value. Because if you look at the graph here, we can see that all of y is above the x-axis, so it's always going to be positive. So there's y as a function of x. So now we've got to figure out what k is going to be. This graph here 
is valid for x values going from minus k to k, which has to be these values from here to here. So what are they going to be? Well, one way we could look at this is just by looking at the equation here that we've got. We know that you can't square root a negative number, so therefore 2 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. In other words, x has to be any number less than or equal to 2. So clearly this upper limit here has to be a 2. Another way you could look at this is if we put in the range of values of t in this equation here for x. When x, or sorry, I should say when t is 0, what do we get? We get 2 times the cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so x would be 2 times 1, or simply 2. So that confirms that value up there. If we're to get this lower limit here, what we could do is substitute t equal to pi upon 2 in for x. Let's do that. Let's just say when t equals pi upon 2. What do we get then? Well, we get that x equals 2 cos of 2 lots of pi upon 2. In other words, simply pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. 2 times negative 1 gives us negative 2. So x equals minus 2. And you can see that the corresponding value of y when that happens, if we substitute pi upon 2 into here, the sign of pi upon 2 is 1, and 6 times 1 is 6. So you can see that that must be this value up here. So it's well worth putting that in, that that's 6 there, at that point there. And this is minus 2. So clearly it's valid for x between minus 2 and 2. So we could say that x lies between minus 2 and 2. And if we compare this to this, we can see that therefore k must be equal to 2. All right?